Good afternoon and welcome to Akonu 4 Radio. My name is Daniel and this is Let the Bible Speak program by the Mitcham Church of Christ. It's going to be hosted by Evangelist Richard Asamoa. For the next few minutes, we're going to be hearing from Evangelist Richard Asamoa. He's going to be telling us a lot about what the Bible is speaking about. God be the glory. Now let us hear from Evangelist Richard Asamoah. Okay, Daniel, thank you very much. May God richly bless you. Fellow listeners, good afternoon. Before we commence or do anything that God Jehovah has, has entrusted us to do this afternoon, let us all bow down our heads and go to God Jehovah in word of praise. Let us pray. Our God in heaven, we thank you once again for giving us the energy and the strength, the mandate and the zeal to come before your throne room this morning to meditate under your feet. The listeners, they are in your hands, Lord. We pray that you will take a seat amongst us so that whatever we are going to do here this day will be accorded to you the way that we want all those things to be accorded. In Christ's name that we have prayed this afternoon. Amen. Amen. Right. Uh, good afternoon, my brothers and my fellow listeners, brother Daniel Amwabin. Good afternoon. Uh, we are talking about or we are discussing some issues concerning why people are suffering in this world. Why are we suffering in this world? This Sunday or this Saturday is part Three. This is the third week that we are deliberating upon this very topic once again. And those of us who were with me last week, we were talking about so many important things. The center of attention concerning what we were discussing last week was based on the subject of uh, uh, Job. We all know how Job uh, he was minding his own business, and at some point in time, the devil went to seek for permission from God Jehovah, and he decided to inflict upon Job some of the incurable things that has ever known to man. But in all aspects of his grievances, as we all know, Job, he never did anything against his conscience, but rather he saw everything as a mark of solidarity to the very person who created the heavens and the universe. So my brothers and sisters, that is basically what we are talking about here this afternoon on this platform. You see, there are so many reasons why people are suffering in this world. And uh, the reason number four, reason number five, reason number four, sorry, why people are suffering in this world, biblically or religious, um, uh, uh, speaking, uh, we can say we can say that whenever suffering comes in our ways, it makes us more appreciative. Suffering makes us more appreciative. Why am I saying all these things? I remember very well last week before we left this platform, I made mention of certain things. 
that as we the mortars, especially we the black people, whenever we go through a whole lot of atrocities, whenever we go through certain things, and at the end of the day, God Jehovah through his intimate wisdom takes us away from all those atrocities. Sometimes, sometimes we tend to take all the credit onto ourselves. As for me, with the edemia, you see, it is because of my own strength, because of my own free will, because of my own accord. That is the reason why I've been able to come out successfully out of all these things. But that is not what the issue is all about. The bottom line is, if God Jehovah is the very person who is orchestrating all these things, he's the very person who is hiding behind the clouds, doing all these things, then at the end of the day, at the end of the day, as he has rightfully promised us, that he's not going to allow us for us to be tempted more than what we can bear. So if all those things happen in our ways, then in that case, my brothers and sisters, we all have to come to the full realization and come to the full conclusion that indeed God Jehovah, he is the very person who is engineering all these things. And so far as he, if he is the very person who is behind all these things, then we must try as much as we can to ascribe all the glory and all the adoration unto his holy name. Sometimes maybe you can land yourself in a very lucrative job somewhere. And as soon as you get that job, at times we can sit back and say, oh, it's because of hard work. It's because of this. It's because of uh, some of the academic career that I've been able to acquire for myself. All those things are some of the motivating factors that help me for me to land myself this lucrative job. But sometimes when all these things are happening, we tend to forget, we tend to forget that God Jehovah that we are serving, he is the very person who is orchestrating all those things. And for that reason, and for that reason, all the glory, all the adoration, everything has to be accorded into his holy name. But sometimes we don't seem to do all those things. But what I'm trying to tell my fellow listeners this afternoon is, whenever we go through trials and temptations, whenever we go through hardship, when there is a shipwreck within our lives, and if we are able to come out through successfully all those things, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it tends to make us more appreciative. We tend to appreciate certain things. You see what I mean? That is basically what the Bible actually talks about. Let's read something. When Apostle Paul was writing to the Lord's congregation in the city of Philippi, in Philippians chapter 1, verse number 3 to 8, it's five verses. Let us pay excessive attention, my brothers and sisters, my fellow listeners, and listen to exactly what Apostle Paul said. In Philippians chapter 1, verse number 3 to verse number 8, let's listen to what the Bible actually says. Paul says, I thank God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion unto the day of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse number six, verse number seven, he says, it is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, for whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me, and God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. This is basically what Apostle Paul is also saying. Then the church at Philippi, Paul, he said, even whilst he was in chains, he had an affection, great affection, that he had wanted to come to those people with the message or the gospel of Christ Jesus. You see what I mean? Meaning, meaning, Paul was trying to tell these people, even the chain that in which he was in, the affliction, the sorrow, the anguish, and all the affliction that he was going through, Apostle Paul, he was all the time attributing all those things. He was seeing all those things as a mark of solidarity with the very person who created the heavens and the universe. So my brothers and sisters, whenever we go through hardship, 
whenever we go through trials and temptation. Good afternoon, Nana. Whenever we go through a whole lot of anxiety, so many things, the Bible says it is going to help us for us to be more appreciative. That is basically what the Bible tells us. So my brothers and sisters, through the trial that we are going through in this world, the hardship, the shipwreck, and all those things that is hovering within the perimeters of our compound, I can tell you for free this afternoon that God Jehovah is the very person hiding behind the clouds and he's the very person who is orchestrating all these things. He's using all these things to shape us because whenever we are living in this world and everything is going on smoothly, we are sliding through effortlessly without any hard work. Nothing is, 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 is targeting us. At the end of the day, we are not going to show any sign of appreciation unto God Jehovah. But whenever God decides to distance himself a little bit and we go through trials and temptations, and if we come out successfully, at the end of the day, we have learned certain lessons. And for that reason, we are going to be more appreciative unto God Jehovah that we are worshiping. My brothers and sisters, that is basically what the Bible tells us. The next reason why we are suffering in this world, suffering is coming at all times. You see, you could be a married person for so many years. You could be a married woman for so many years. But sometimes, sometimes, but for all that you know, you find out there are so many things, a whole lot of things will not be going on smoothly the way that you want all those things to happen. You see what I mean? But sometimes when all these things are happening, as mortals, sometimes we tend to shift the blame upon certain people, but that shouldn't be the case. And this particular platform, this lesson that we are learning here this afternoon, we are trying to indoctrinate ourselves for us to come to the full realization that anything that we are going through, whether good or bad, all those things, we have to attribute everything into the hands of God over himself. Because let's take, for instance, the issue that concerned Job, for instance. You see, if God Jehovah did not decide to distance himself a little bit away from the life of Job, Satan wouldn't have had the opportunity to go and inflict Job with all those bad things that the Bible talks about. But on the contrary, God Jehovah gave the permission to Satan. That is the reason why Satan was able to do all those. So the same thing applies to you. The same thing applies to me as well. Some of the things that we go through in life, we need to accept it, that it is true, that all those things that we are going through, it is part of the handiwork of the very person that created the heaven and the universe. The next reason why God Jehovah is allowing people, God is distancing himself for people to go through hardship for people to go through certain trials and temptations because we will be able to be more dependent upon him. You see, these days, some of the so-called preachers, the so-called pastors, some of the motivational speeches that they keep on giving to people, you see, they preach and they do certain things such like that they will inflict upon your mind for you to come to the full realization that the moment that you have become a Christian, there is no way that you are going to lose your job. There is no way that we are going to fall sick. There is no way that your wife is going to do certain things that you are not going to have, feel happy about. There is no way that sorrow, weariness, and all those things are going to be at your doorstep. That is what they preach, but that is not true. The moment that you have become a Christian, that doesn't mean that everything, all the prayers, every request that you put at the throne room of God, all the answers are going to be positive. That is not what the Bible talks about. And very soon, as soon as this lesson is done, we are going to have a look at something concerning prayers. The way even God over himself, the way that he answers our prayers. And we will be able to find out from the Bible. Sometimes God can say, yes, you are asking me for bread and I'll give you bread. Sometimes God will say, no, you are asking me for bread. I'm not going to give you any substitute. And the bread itself, I'm not going to give it to you. It happened several occasions within the Bible. Sometimes God can say, okay, you've asked me for bread. I won't give you the bread, but rather I'll give you something different. You see what I mean? There are so many ways that God Jehovah answers our prayers. But the so-called pastors, the so-called prophets that we are having these days, all the motivational things, some of the things that they come about, 
they do certain things such that people people will come to the full realization that the moment that you become you, you have become a christian then all your problems everything is done and that's it that is not the way that god jehovah has orchestrated certain things even jesus christ himself the finisher and the author of our newfound faith when jesus christ came into this world jesus christ he went through a whole lot of atrocities he went through a whole lot of ups and downs a whole lot of things was not going on well within his life but in the end in the end the bible says he was tempted in all ways yet he was without sin why because he saw all those things he saw everything as a mark of solidarity to the very person who created the heaven and the universe so as mortals as christians let us continue to bear all these thoughts in mind because whenever things are not going on well with us that is the time that is the time that we go down on our knees that is the time that we enter into the throne room of god at all times that is the time that we sing melodiously that is the time that we tend to get closer to god jehovah at all times you see so god sometimes he tends to distance himself a little bit so that we are going to draw much much closer onto him when we read the book of Acts chapter 17 verse number 28 Acts chapter 17 verse number 20 let's read something small over there and use this very bible reference uh, to cement this argument that we are putting across here this afternoon Acts chapter 17 verse number 28 it reads for in him we live and move and, uh, and have our being, as some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. We are his offspring. What is happening over here? This is Apostle Paul speaking when he decided uh, to uh, uh, make unceremonial visit into the city of Athens. When Paul went to this very place, right, he saw some of the aristocrats, uh, some of the professors, some of the learned people, within uh, the city of Athens, he decided to engage them in a conversation. And in the process, the Bible says, Paul was able to indoctrinate all these people for them to come to the full realization that idol worshiping and all those kind of things, you see, their future salvation does not depend solely within all those things, but rather, but rather the very person who created the heaven and the universe, is the very person that they have to turn around and come and worship him because he used some of their own artifacts, some of the things they are, some of their handmade things that that they, they they have made during those days. And Paul was able to use some of those things to indoctrinate all these people. So, my brothers and my sisters, the Bible is telling us this afternoon that all the trial, the anguish, the suffering, the ups and downs, the shipwreck that is coming in our ways all those things are happening all those things are knocking constantly on our doors in order for us to be more dependable upon god jehovah that we are worshiping next one the sixth point another reason why suffering god jehovah has decided to distance himself for suffering to come at our beck and call because when suffering comes when suffering comes it helps to purify us. It helps to purify us. It is true. An apostle Peter, Peter, when he was writing to the Christians in Rome, in uh, Christians in Jerusalem, Peter, he says something in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 6 and 7. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 6 and 7. It is a very, very important comment that Peter made over here. Sometimes, you see, those of you who have, who have visited, um, uh, uh, um, some of the mining cities in Ghana, for instance, you see, when when the ore is extracted from the soil, right from the very beginning, you see, it comes out of the soil with a whole lot of impurities. And what they do is very, very simple. They carry all those things into a, a, into a furnace. They, they, they burn all those things together with the impurities. So the moment the ore comes out of the fire, it purifies because all the all the impurities, everything is going to get burned in the fire. The same thing applies to the suffering that we are going through as mortals. 
So in First Peter chapter 1, verse number 6 and 7, Peter is saying, Peter is also saying, in you, in this, you, you, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. You see, over here, Apostle Peter is also telling us that the life that we are living in this world, you see what I mean? There are so many ups and downs. You see what I mean? And if we go through trials and temptations, if we go through all those shipwrecks, at the end of the day, if we are able to stand firm, if we are not being allowed to be swayed away from all those very things, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we are going to be like gold that has been put in fire. At the end of the day, the gold, as I said earlier on, the impurities there are going to get burned in the fire. And when the ore, the gold is taken out of the fire, the impurities are going to be left in the fire and the gold itself is going to come out successfully. You see what I mean? The same thing applies to we, the mortars as well. So sometimes whenever things are not going one way with you, my brothers and sisters, the Bible has never told us anything. Jesus Christ has also never promised us that we are going to live trouble-free or problem-free religion in this world. So whenever you become a Christian and you lose your job, the moment you become a Christian and you, 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 you lose a loved one, if you become a Christian and there are certain things that you, you've been praying for and all those things are not coming, my brother and sister says, never, never at any point in time say, oh, God, Jehovah has disappointed you. God is not a man that he should lie. The Bible says the strength of Israel is not a man that he should lie. All his promises are amen. You see what I mean? But on the contrary, let us come to the full realization that there is time for everything. There is time to laugh and there is time to cry. There is time to sleep and there is time to be awakened as well. So let us continue to bear all these things in mind because sometimes because of lack of knowledge, you see what I mean? Because of lack of knowledge, we tend to do so many things. But as I keep on telling my listeners, ignorance has never, and it will never be an acceptable excuse in matters of the law. So we must try as much as we can and work according to the ordinances of God Jehovah himself. Work according to his presence at all times. And I know very well in no time, all the bad wind that is blowing across our faces, all the ups and downs that we are experiencing, you see what I mean? They are there on temporary basis. They are there on temporary basis. So whenever things of that nature are hovering within the perimeters of our compounds, let us not turn our back against God and say, oh God, uh, why, why me? Why have we done this? Why have we done this? We see all those things. If we do that, it means we are trying to question the integrity of God. And we have no right to do that. If we keep on doing that, it will be seen as a serious violation in the sight of the Supreme Head himself. So we need to be very careful and make sure that whatever be the case, anything that comes in our ways, just as Job said, it is well with my soul. Let us also do the same thing and leave the rest into the hands of God Jehovah. It is difficult. It is difficult. But the Bible is telling us that God Jehovah, he is the very person, he is strong and we are weak. And if we tend to rope shoulders with him, at the end of the day, we are going to be more than conquerors at all times. So let us bear all these thoughts in mind. And the next one that we're talking about here this afternoon, when problems and temptations come in our ways, when suffering comes, it makes us more sympathetic. It makes us more sympathetic. Why am I saying this? Without wasting much of your time, let's go to the book of Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians um, chapter number one, verse number three to four. Second Corinthians chapter one, chapter one, verse number three to four. There is a reason why I'm saying that when problems come in our ways, it makes us more sympathetic. Let us read the Bible and listen to what Apostle Paul said when he was writing a personal letter 
to the Christians at Corinth, to the Christians at Theron, Corinth. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 3 to 4. Paul said, Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from Christ. That is what the Bible is talking about. You see, we say experience is the best teacher. Sometimes if you go through certain hardships, if you go through some shipwreck, you go through some ups and downs, and you are able to come out successfully. Obviously, obviously, you are going to learn lessons from all those things. So whenever you find out your or brother or your sister is also going through the same problems because of the lessons, the experience that you have in the past, you'll be able to stand firm and indoctrinate or help such a person for him also to come out of all those trials and temptations easily. That is basically what the Bible tells us. You see, and the Bible is telling us in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1, verse number 3 and 4, that is basically what Apostle Paul is telling us. You see, that experience is the best teacher. Sometimes when you go through trials and temptations, the moment that you are able to come out successfully out of all those trials, it is true, it is true you'll be able to stand firm. Your feet is going to be deeply rooted within those kind of things. And all those who are also becoming acquainted with all those things, and you know very well it's not going to help them, you'll be able to stand firm. You are also going to stand well to indoctrinate all those people for them also to come out of all those things uh, within a very short space of time. So Apostle Paul is telling us, that whenever we go through trials and temptations, it makes us more sympathetic. That is basically what the Bible is telling us. And finally, finally, my brothers and sisters, my fellow listeners, whenever we go through trials and temptations, whenever we go through trials and temptations, uh, it makes us more prayerful. It makes us more prayerful. Next week, Lord willing, when we come back on this platform again, there is one million dollar question that we are all going to ask ourselves. The problem of suffering that we are talking about here, the one that we've been talking about for the past three weeks, who or what causes all these things? We have been able to conclude that God Jehovah himself, sometimes he is the brain behind all those things. So, so if God Jehovah decides to distance himself away from us in order for us to go through trials and temptations. At the end of the day, the bottom line is God is our father. He's not going to give us a serpent whenever we ask him for fish. He's not going to give us songs whenever we ask him for bread. So for that reason, we need to ask ourselves, is he the very person who is directly giving us all those bad things, the diseases, the sorrow, the that the weariness and all these bad things that we are experiencing these days, is it direct work of the Supreme Head himself? Or he had decided, the moment he decided to distance himself, there is someone else who is also going to take that place and orchestrate all those bad things. We will surely let the Bible speak, Lord willing, next week. So in conclusion, in conclusion, whenever we go through bad things, whenever we go through trials and temptations, it makes us more prayerful. It is true. You see, sometimes when things are not going on well, that is a time that we, the mortals, we go to God Jehovah in prayers at all times. But that shouldn't have been the case. You see, when David was writing the book of Psalms in Psalm 100, verse number one to five, David said, I will enter into the calls of God Jehovah with, with thanksgiving in my heart and into his call with praises. But sometimes whenever we come into the throne room of God, we all the time come in into the throne room of God with a load of cares. That is the time that we come before the throne room. But that shouldn't be the case. When things are going on smoothly, when there is laughter, when there is peace, all those things, when everything is going on smoothly for us, that is the time that we have to get closer 
to God Jehovah himself. But we don't do things like that. We wait until the time that incurable diseases are visiting us. We wait until the time that we lose our jobs. We wait until the time that we lose our loved ones. We wait until the time that a whole lot of bad things are happening in our lives. That is the time that we tend to get closer to God Jehovah. But that shouldn't be the case. The good thing that we have, all the smiles, the, 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 the things that we are experiencing that is bringing laughter, peace, and harmony, unity amongst us, that is a time that we have to continue to rock shoulders with God Jehovah for him to cement all those things for us, for us to continue to enjoy all those things. But as mortals, we don't do things like that. We sit somewhere and wait until things are falling down in our faces. That is the time that we tend to get closer to God. My time is up. I will end here and Lord willing next week when we come back on this platform, we are going to talk about some of the very people who are behind all the bad things that we are experiencing in this world. Sometimes we'll be able to find out that we are the architect of our own doom. We'll be able to find out all those things within the Bible. May God bless you all. May God continue to empower us so that the good thing that he decided, he has decided to do within our lives, he should continue to do all those things until the day of visitation. And just as we began this program with a word of praise, let us bring the curtains down by means of praise as well. Tomorrow afternoon, Lord willing, at 3 p.m., we are going to congregate once again on this platform and continue to study under the feet of Christ. So if you have time tomorrow afternoon, we are talking about the three dispensations, the three dispensations on this line uh, tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m. If you have time, come and join us for us to study under the feet of Christ. Let us pray, my brothers and my listeners. God of our fathers, we thank you once again. We know very well, Lord, that you are the very person who is sitting on the great throne, doing all the marvelous and the wonderful things that we are experiencing globally. We thank you for giving us the seed, the energy, and the strength to come here this afternoon also to spread your ways. We know very well the message has been spread, and we know very well you're going to help us for it to germinate. And if it germinates, it is going to spring up and bear good fruits for all human flesh. We thank you. We know very well that we are going to bless us until we become a blessing unto others as well. We know very well that we are prayer answering God. We are going to do all these things for us because we ask asking for this and many other blessings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we have prayed. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all. Brother Daniel, thank you very much. May God bless you all. Also, someone please help me to feed my kids, please. Okay, Clinton in Tigamo, we'll get back to you very shortly. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.